brothers and sisters, I want to see you see your hands up there. Let me see you see your hands. I want everybody to kick up some noise. I want to hear some revolution out there, brothers. I want to hear a little revolution. Three, four, one, two, three. Kick off the jails, mo. I'm Wayne Kramer. I started a band in Detroit called the MC5. MC5 were one of those influential bands that were truly ahead of their time. They were kind of the, the setup team, you know, the trailblazers that kind of cut the path for the next generation. That next generation of bands became that 70s punk revolution uh, with the Sex Pistols, the Clash, etc. Uh, but if not for the MC5 and other bands like the Stooges, uh, who's to say that that punk revolution would have A happened or B it might have sounded quite a lot differently. I thought it was important uh, that the performance was on all levels and it was, you know, musically it had to be dynamic and challenging uh, and the way we performed physically had to express what was happening in the music and in other words a lot of dancing, a lot of movement, a lot of energy. clothes made up out of these exotic materials and the rest of the people in the band did as well. And um, I thought maybe the guitar itself could be uh, part of this kind of total assault on the culture. When I painted the guitar with this motif, it was really to claim my patriotism in spite of what the country was doing at the time. From the time I was a boy and started playing the guitar, Fender guitars were um, the apotheosis to me. They were just spectacular instruments. The shape of the guitars, the color, the finishes. Candy Apple Red is a, a hot rod finish, you know, and I'm from Detroit and I grew up loving hot rod cars and there was a connection between the, the aesthetic of the Fender guitar uh, and custom cars. I refer to this as my kick out the jams American Revolution Stratocaster. It's the guitar I was playing in that era and in fact it's the guitar I play on that recording. On the album cover it shows me playing a Gibson SG which was a guitar I borrowed for the sound check um, but I didn't actually use it on when we recorded so the sound on kick out the jams is actually this guitar. The guitar is an icon of, you know, A, capturing this musical moment where things change, but also kind of just owing to that freedom of musical expression and just the symbol of kind of continuing to push the boundaries, which is what rock and roll was all about. It's been a very long process. Uh, 16 years we've been putting this together. We started working on this in 1995. We've gone through uh, numerous uh, pickup arrangements, uh, wiring, uh, paint jobs, color schemes, and uh, finally got it right. For a guitar player, um, it doesn't get any better. This is uh, the high point. You know, the guitar is the portal to me, to expressing myself to the whole world that I've invented around myself. So to have, a, you, you know, your own signature model guitar is, uh, a great uh, and humbling honor. The band's seminal influence is indisputable. Uh, all the critics' polls, you know, Wayne's on the 100 Greatest Guitarists of All Time with Rolling Stone, Kick Out the Jams is one of the 100 Greatest Rock Songs, have been nominated to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, etc. But where really you can see their influence is with artists. And the artists that claim influence by the MC5 is super wide. Uh, you've got from Blue Oyster Cult covering Kick Out the Jams to Africa Bambata to Rage Against the Machine to Jeff Buckley, Henry Rollins, Bad Brains. So it really spans genre, it spans generations, and it's really just become a rock and roll anthem for the ages that everybody can kind of get with and get behind. Of course, the MC5 ended in 1972, but I'm, I see myself as um, kind of the curator of the MC5's legacy. 
and I continue to tell the story of the MC5. And, and I think this guitar goes some ways to um, maintaining that legacy. Hey!